And standing in for Connor is David Hall as our invocator. David, thank you. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> so, uh, St. Francis of Assisi, um, where there is hatred in this world, let us bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. May we always try to understand, not just be understood. Hope to console as well as to be consoled. Try to love, not just be loved. For it is in, for it is in giving that we receive in serving others that we find our deepest fulfillment, in setting aside our focus on self, that we find the true meaning of life. Amen. Thank you, David. And now please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Cheryl, can you share the four-way test slide? The four-way test of the things we think, say, and do inside and outside of Rotary. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? All right, thank you. David, you, you're doing double duty. Uh, do we have any guests to introduce? I, I don't believe so. I see Thomas's iPhone. I think that's Tom Knauer. Um That is, he's at elementary school, I think, uh, ah, okay. do, doing fatherly duties. In that case, I uh, do not see any other guests uh, other than our guest speaker. All right, well, we will introduce Bill in a few minutes. Sandy Tarragon. Narragon looks like a, a, a movie star. So I thought we had someone in from uh, California with her <laughs> shades in the sunny sky, but welcome. Taking advantage of Ohio sun. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Bill, one of the things that we do, one of the things that I do, I impose on this club every week is so that it's not a listen to Rob McGregor talk. Uh, I take advantage of, uh, of the, the power of the presidency and throw in an icebreaker each week so that we get some members of the club to share some ideas. They, it's not pre-prepared most weeks. Next week, it's going to be, and I'll tell you all that at the end, because I, I think I'm gonna just break, break our usual uh, routine. So today, what we're gonna talk about is it's an either or question. So would you rather go back in time to meet your ancestors or travel forward to meet your descendants. So go back in time or travel forward. Do you want to bury your past or anticipate greatness in the future? Let me see. I'm going to ask John Reyes to play. I haven't heard John play for a bit. I think I'll go to the past and see what happened back there. And is your goal to fix what happened back there or... or uh... That, that presumes I could make it better. No, I think I'd just, you know, visit and, uh, and try to avoid making it worse. All right, that's fair. Phil, Phil Williams, I think you have an anniversary coming up. So in honor of your anniversary one year uh, tomorrow, uh, what, what would you like to do? Um, let's look forward. Let's go see what the future holds and, you know, and... I'd be excited to see, you know, those types of things where my kids grow up in, you know, are they good members of society or, or not so much and everything like that. So, Well, I'm betting your kids will be good members of society, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get your report when you come back from the future. Right. Brian Casarco, I like your background. What, what would you rather do? Would you rather go back and dredge up the skeletons in your closet or look forward? Uh, thanks for the background. Um, I think I'd rather go forward, try and figure out what's going to happen, not what's already happened. Okay. Stu, what's your strategy? I would like to go backwards and see what all uh, President 
Buchanan was involved with. He is supposedly a great, great, great uncle to me, but I don't really have, haven't taken time to go back and find out. I'd like to find out a little bit about his history. Yeah, so you've got a presidential bloodline here. No wonder you've been such a good leader for us, too. Let me see who else is going to get picked on today. Mario Macau, I know that I don't see your video, but yeah, I see that you're present, and uh, I'm, I'm curious what uh, what your take on that is. Go back in time to meet your ancestors, or go forward to see your depend your your descendants or or other others. Well, I am honored you have selected me. Thank you for your time, <laughs> and also hello everyone. It's good to see everyone. It's been a while. Um, I'm going forward, man. I want to see what new, what the future holds. I want to see what new fray, what new craze has overtaken TikTok with all the young kids. Uh, I got to go forward, man. See what everything's like. So thank you. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> Thanks, Mario. Bill Mamby Jr. Uh, so, so what, what, what would be your preference? To go back in time and see your uh, ancestors or figure out where you came from or what, what were the steps that got you here or go forward and see what happens with your descendants or where, where we are. I'd probably go forward for sure. Any, com any compelling uh, thing that you want to follow up on? Oh yeah. The, like the, th the three children I have that I probably would be more interested in seeing uh, how their lives progress um, not nothing against going back in time, but I have some of that documented. So the one thing I think you sweat when you leave this earth is missing out on something. So I'd love to be able to go forward and figure out, well, then I'm not missing out. Right. I'll find out. All right. Morgan, again, I see your lovely picture. Uh, I'm sure you're, uh, incommunicado from a visual way, but, uh, could you share with us which of those choices you would exercise? Hi. Yes. Um, well, I would say I would like to go back in the past and uh, just see the history of my family and where we came from. So I would like to do that. All right. Any presidents in your lineage? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think there's like a historic pirate in my lineage, but that's about it. <laughs> oh, well, I have I have a Robin Hood character in mind, Rob Roy McGregor. Uh, oh, nice! Is that who of, you were named after? I, I was, and he was uh, booted out of the McGregor clan because he was uh, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor, which I actually thought was pretty admirable. But uh, but he has his own plaid, so the McGregor plaid looks like a Christmas blanket, and the Rob Roy plaid is red and black. Uh, uh, checkers or, or a tartan and uh, unfortunately I had one of those that was my that was my fun tie but the moths thought it was more fun <laughs> than the dry cleaners so uh, so well, I you'll have to that. get another one for his for history I, I may have to just so I could have that little acting out part yeah. of my personality <laughs> Rich I see you grinning where, where would you go Rich back or back or forward Rich Fry I would also go forward. I think uh, I want to see some flying cars or something cool, uh, new inventions. Uh, that's good. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what that, if, if you're predicting the future. All right. So uh, Katerina, why don't you take us home? Where, where would you go forward or backwards? Katerina Pappas. There I would are. definitely go forward. All right. Anything compelling that makes you say that? Well, my family, my children, my grandchildren that hopefully I'll have someday. Um, I want to know what's going to happen with all of that. Yeah, I, I, sh I share that sentiment. You know, I have, a, I have a grandson that's five months old, as I've, I've told you about a week in, week in and week out. Um, and I just realized that, boy, by the time he's 20, that I'm going to be pretty old. And so I want to get to the future to see what he turns out to be too. I think that's, that would be a really fun exercise and a, a privilege, but well, thanks again for indulging me. I'm going to get some announcements here. 
Um, oh, before we do announcements, are there any Rotary ambassadors, anybody who's been to another Rotary event or a club meeting outside of our own? John Reyes. I was privileged to attend the Cleveland Club's uh, meeting last week where our district governor, Pat Myers, was the uh, official guest and speaker. All right, thanks, John. I think there were a few other people on the call that were there too. I believe I saw Stu there. I saw Cheryl there. And I was there as well. Anybody else? Dr. Rob, Sandy. Yes, yes Sandy. I, uh, I've been participating in interviews for the Rotary Camp. They are hiring a new program manager. Tina's gonna be leaving. Um, so I've been participating in those, and it's been interesting. Well, that's great. So, yeah, Dan, Dan shared that they're getting close to uh, getting that successor. And uh, I, I'll just put in a bit, if it's between two people and one of them is small and lightweight that would be able to keep a rhythm and could be our dragon boat uh, <laughs> drummer, uh, just, keep, just keep that in mind. That would be a, that would be a side <laughs> uh, value added. Okay. Uh, Cheryl. Yeah, I, I attended uh, Saturday. I was privileged and honored to be part of our four-way speech contest for the district. Um, boy, these kids are amazing. And uh, I was able to judge a couple of, uh, of the contests and the winners are being announced and will be presented on Saturday at our 11, or 11 o'clock uh, time at the district conference. They are very brilliant. Will they give their speech at that at that time? Yeah, we will be playing the recording of their speech at that time. Yes, the winners. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wonderful. And special thanks go out to Sandy and Julie and Cheryl for hosting our four-way speech uh, and judging that. So we had some candidates that got honorable mention and I believe a third place, but I don't think we'll have any of our students uh, there on Saturday, at least not getting prizes. So the annual meeting pre-registration is due now up until the time of the meeting. And we will have all that information attached to the Acrotarian again. So I encourage you all to take advantage of it virtually. You can kind of pick and choose what you want to do. If you want to be, it's a combined district meeting after um, the, the initial kickoff on Thursday. Thursday is our district. For those of you who agreed to be told or volunteer asked to uh, be our delegates that cast votes, you need to be on the, the call at 545. So we, we get a 15 minute early entrance. Anybody is allowed to go to this piece, but there are five of our voting members from our club. And I believe you know who you are. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, Connor's got some plumbing duties, so he's not there. Uh, Tamara had to step out because she's uh, getting a, a second vaccine, not the not the question, not the one that's in question today, according to the news. But she's getting her second dose, I believe, of Pfizer. Uh, so she's taking a pass. I'm going to step in for her. Stu's going to help out. Terry and Katie. So, no, not Katie. Julie. It's Julie, sorry. <laughs> I'm glad I have you on screen, Katie. Our dues invoice, uh, we, have, we have finally gotten our act together. We have our specific rules and we will have a, a statement on the web and your invoice will come out on the former tax day. I know that all the, the accountants have read the sigh of release that they have a little extension, but our, our invoice will go out on the 15th and is due within 30 days. So please make sure whoever helps you make your payments, you bring it to their attention sooner rather than later. Appreciate that. All right, who's happy? Katie's happy. I see her sitting out in the sun. Katie's always happy. Um, I have five happy dollars. Um, first of all, I want to give a huge shout out to our speaker today who on less than 24 hours notice agreed to fill in because we had a cancellation today and I am extremely grateful um, and I'm anxious to hear what he has to say. Um, also, uh, I got 
Tim and I got our second shot last week and we felt great afterwards. Luckily we hydrated and we didn't have any side effects. So we hopped in the COVID camper and we're down here in Freeport, Florida. And we missed all the horrible storms that hit the panhandle. Um, I'm sitting outside with a bunch of stuff falling on me from our tree, but you know, that is what that is. Um, but the funny thing is I forgot it was in central time. So I'm thinking, Ooh, I got up early. I have an extra hour. Oh, I look at my watch. Oh, it's only 10. I have another hour. And then I'm like, Oh crap, I'm central time. So to get on that <laughs> board meeting and then get on this one, but, uh, happy to be here. And again, really grateful. Thank you so much, Bill, for agreeing to speak with us today. All right. Cheryl's happy. I am very happy. Uh, Steve and I had our second shot last Friday, and I'm pleased to report very similar to, to what Katie just shared. Uh, just a sore arm, and I had a headache for a couple of days, but stayed uh, 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 beyond it with uh, some Tylenol, and I was happy to have that Moderna shot and uh, wait out this next two weeks. So Great. hope You're everybody gets stretch. it. Yep. You're in the home stretch. Don't do anything silly. Nope. <laughs> Blow it now. All right. Anybody else happy? Oh, David. Yeah, I have uh, five happy dollars. Um, so I got to go down to Florida last week. We, my wife and I drove down, stopped in Georgia uh, last on Good Friday, saw my daughter play a soccer game the last regular season there. And then we got to see uh, Tuesday and Saturday them win their tournament conference uh, championship and uh, finish uh, the year. Uh, third in the nation. So again, they had a, an excellent year this year, even though there's no national tournament, uh, they still rank pretty high. So very proud of her. And and, uh, and uh, Thursday, I go to get my second shot. So I'm excited about that. Oh, good. Well, congratulations on, uh, are in order for your daughter and for you. So that's, uh, that's awesome. I'm glad you had a good trip. Anybody else happy? I'm happy to see Ginny and her daughter sitting there having lunch and drinking some wine. <laughs> That's worth another dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to you decide. You are my heroes. I was, <laughs> I was trying to decide if I was happy or just jealous. I was. I, I, had, I hadn't quite landed on where my uh, where, where I am in space here. <laughs> Cheers for those of you who didn't have them on your on your screen. That was a very nice shot. I hope you got a photo of that, Cheryl. Maybe you can lift that from the video. Okay, well, we'll wrap up happy dollars and we will have the opportunity, I will have the opportunity to introduce William C.P. Bill, co-director of Task Force, spelled with the C, T-A-S-C, Force, L-L-C. That's a non nonprofit advocacy group formed in 2019 as the main focus is the promotion of multi-purpose recreational trails in and around Summit County, as well as creating and preserving green spaces. Bill was uh, educated as a chemical engineer at the University of Rhode Island and retired from Sherwin-Williams in 2014 after 25 years in their engineering department. When he left the, the company, he was the director of engineering. He served as a volunteer advisor for Hudson Job Search since 2011 and loves getting in around the golf weekly, but most times can be fine pedaling one of his bicycles. And I'm gonna tell my wife that you have more than one bicycle because she won't let me get a second one uh, along the trails, multi-purpose trails in Summit Portage in Cuyahoga County. So without further ado, Bill, again, thanks for stepping in. Uh, we The trails have been uh, something that was near and dear to this club. It was one of our virtual activities in the fall. We did the hiking spree as a club and shared our photos. So. We, we have a, a real fondness for the trails and uh, as a cyclist, I love them too. So thanks, Bill. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, and, and I'm very happy because uh, my wife and I will be getting our second uh, Pfizer shot this coming Sunday. So that's something to be looking forward to. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen, I guess. Okay. And we got to get rid of that sidebar. So we're going to do that. There we go. Okay, so um, our group is uh, Task Force and Trail Advocates of Summit County, as Dr. McGregor uh, stated. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a history on uh, how we got started. So we're a nonprofit volunteer organization that got started back in 2019. 
Um, and again, our, our goal is to garner public support for multi-purpose trails in Summit County. But when we're going to share our website with you at the end of the presentation, you'll see that we've partnered with a number of other organizations, like-minded organizations that feel very strongly about um, preservation of green spaces uh, in and around the area. So for the last two years, we have been focused on an opportunity uh, that is known to us as the Veterans Trail. Uh, in other circles, it's, it's called the Akron Secondary Line. Um, this project we realize will take years to complete. Uh, we had a meeting with the folks at uh, Rails to Trails in Wayne County a couple of years ago, and they told us that uh, be prepared for the long haul because trail building is measured in decades, not in years. But we're committed to working with uh, local governments and county agencies and, and the public at large uh, to make this trail a reality. Here's uh, some of our beliefs at Task Force. Um, we know that building a, a trail is, is, is costly, but it's an investment that will live on in per, 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 perpetuity uh, for, for people to come uh, after us. Uh, green space and equitable access is imperative to maintaining healthy lifestyles. And I think a, a note I want to add to that is I think in the last year, as the pandemic raged on, uh, people were really uh, looking to get outdoors more, to, to, to hike, to ride their bicycles, to just get uh, exercise. A lot of gyms and fitness centers were closed down. And I know for myself, I felt that um, a lot of the trails that I ride my bike on were a lot more crowded last year. Not that that's a bad thing, but we could always use more, more trails. And greenways have an economic benefit to the communities. They exist by boosting property values, adding recreational opportunities to everyone, creating opportunities for alternative ways to commute to work. Um, as Rob mentioned, that I was uh, at Sherwin Williams, and the, the last few years of my career, um, I um, connected with several of my coworkers at Sherwin Williams that worked in different departments who were also avid cyclists, and we would uh, commute to work uh, via the towpath trail to downtown Cleveland every day, uh, whenever I was in the office. Great way to start the day. Uh, improving wellness. Uh, increasing tourism. Uh, people having a, a different way to get access to various cities by using a bicycle rather than an automobile. And then providing access to businesses and retail stores. Uh, and I always think about uh, downtown Akron because we have ridden our bikes to downtown Akron uh, via the towpath trail in the past. So who started Task Force? Um, my good friend, a former neighbor of mine when I lived in Hudson, Ron Brubaker. Uh, Ron worked at uh, Goodyear for 46 years. His last position there was IT project manager and, of course, myself. Uh, I, I lived in Hudson for 29 years, and we've now been in Stowe um, for the last four years. We're, we always say we're just a couple of retired engineers looking for a way to give back to the community. Uh, some of our other team members, we're a small army, but we're, we're a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Mike Hulver, um, who lives up in Hudson. He's an avid runner, but um, he is also a certified running coach and um, coaches track and field at Western Reserve Academy. And then we have uh, Austin Rao, who is a resident of Cuyahoga Falls, uh, another engineer. Um, and he's been a great addition to our team and has been um, talking with the folks in Cuyahoga Falls about uh, a secondary project that would tie into the Veterans Trail project. And then um, the last person uh, is our legal counsel, Amanda Clapp. She's the gal that keeps us out of trouble um, and takes care of anything from a legal uh, and nonprofit situation. So some background on this proposed Veterans Trail. This is an abandoned railroad right of way that runs from Akron up through Cuyahoga Falls, Silver Lake, Stowe, and then finally into Hudson. It's about 12 and a half miles long. The last train that ran on these tracks uh, was about 1996. That's the history that we have been able to uncover. And we've determined to take tremendous investment to bring rail traffic onto that right away again. And it's been long I, I, uh, studied and looked at as an opportunity for the last 16 years, as a matter of fact, 
In 2005, the five communities that I mentioned paid for uh, an environmental uh, design group to do a study on building a, a multi-purpose trail on that right-of-way. Uh, it was subsequently um, set aside and uh, it's been, nobody's been really doing anything about it and task force has decided to try to see if we can get the, the ball moving down the road. Uh, Metro RTA owns about 90% of the right-of-way. Um, up in Hudson at Barlow Road and further north, that right-of-way piece is owned by Norfolk and Southern. But we're gonna set that aside for right now and really focus on uh, Metro RTA and the work we've been doing with Metro to make this trail a reality. They, um, for, if any of you uh, are familiar with the Freedom Trail that goes from Akron uh, and heads Northeast up to Kent, um, that was the last big project that Metro and Summit Metro Parks uh, did a joint venture on. Uh, Summit Metro Parks leased the land from Metro and built a beautiful trail on it. Uh, it's one of our favorites to ride our bikes on. And, and Metro has, Metro Parks has expressed an interest again in partnering with Metro RTA to, to build and manage this veterans trail if we uh, can, can get this thing moving. So what is the current condition of the right of way? Well, like I said, the last train ran in 1996. There's a significant amount of track has been removed south of Broad Avenue in Cuyahoga Falls. Uh, tracks to the north of Broad Avenue appear to be very poor condition and would require significant repair in order to be used again. Several of the crossings over roads have been paved over. Uh, most recently, uh, Stowe paved over the crossing at Graham Road just east of the Route 8 Expressway. That was, uh, I believe, in 2019. There are some sections that are better than others, but in some areas you'll find trees that are 50 foot tall that are growing right through the track bed. And, and the bridges haven't been maintained at all for rail use, which would be uh, a big concern for anyone interested in uh, putting rail traffic back on this uh, right of way. The bottom line is tremendous investment would be required to reactivate this line to uh, run a, a rail on it. Um, folks that um, uh, looked at this project up in Hudson uh, several years ago, um, I believe the gentleman's name was Keith Smith. He was the park board uh, president at the time, uh, mentioned that it was somewhere in excess of $11 million to uh, reactivate rail on that uh, right of way. Why this right of way would make an ideal trail? Well, it connects those five communities and provides a fantastic north to south trail that goes right through a very densely populated of Summit County. It would connect with seven other trails and provides an ideal opportunity again for both commuter use and recreational use. The right of way goes along and crosses over the Cuyahoga River in Silver Lake, it passes by the Silver Lake Country Club. Stowe has some very nice secluded sections. And in Hudson, it passes by a private lake, the Ellsworth Meadows Golf Course, a private cemetery, and uh, the two parks there, Cascade and Veterans Way Park. When I talk about connectivity to other trails, here's a map that shows uh, what I'm talking about. Um, and we'll go around this map real quick. You'll see Boston Heights is planning a trail that's gonna to connect to uh, the Biking Height Trail. Uh, Hudson uh, has also been looking at uh, just an extension of this trail uh, up in that same direction towards the Boston Heights Trail. Of course, we're all familiar with the existing Summit Metro Parks Bike and Hike Trail, truly a fantastic uh, place to, to ride a bike or to take a hike, walk your dog, jog, whatever. Of course, I mentioned the Freedom Trail that runs from Akron up towards Kent. Um, uh, down below on the lower right-hand right -hand corner, uh, the Akron Rubber City Heritage Trail. This is a new trail that is being built. It's, it's in the planning stages. There have been funds um, given by AMATS uh, to the city to build this trail, and it will connect the former uh, tire and rubber manufacturing plants in Akron. Uh, and that, this trail will not connect directly to it, but it will connect via bike lane on Arlington Avenue. Um, our trail would also provide a connection to the towpath trail. And then there's another planned project from Summit Metro Parks called the Highbridge Trail um, that would connect over to the towpath further north. So those are the seven connections. 
So where would this trail start from? Well, it starts at Akron's Northside train station and it moves to the east. Um, this is uh, that picture on the right-hand side that you're looking at um, is the tracks leaving the North station heading to the east. Here's some more pictures and we've hiked most of the right of way. So you have a, a good idea of, uh, that we have a good idea of, of where this right of way runs and, and the conditions. Um, you can see through uh, North and Akron, uh, how it's, uh, the area is uh, very, very much overgrown. Um, in some places on the right-hand side, the, the rail has been removed, but um, um, the, the railroad ties have been left in place. We were very surprised when we hiked this, uh, when we got to Evans Avenue, um, you might be familiar with the road construction project going there. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see an arch bridge and that actually goes right over the right of way for um, this, this trail that we're talking about. And just to the left of that, or I guess it would be east, uh, you'll see the uh, large uh, bridge that's been put in place uh, over the existing active rail line that uh, runs uh, north-south. As you go further north up to Talmadge Avenue, um, there's a warehouse there that fronts Talmadge Avenue. Um, and now you'll see the live tracks in the background, but uh, where I took the picture from uh, is actually on the right-of-way itself. So there is a little bit of distance and separation between the active rail, rail tracks and, and the right-of-way. And then here's a picture of the backside of Lyondell, the former uh, A. Shulman Company facility. Uh, here's where the, the trail would pass underneath Talmadge Avenue. Uh, this is uh, looking north on the left. And then um, the picture on the right-hand side would be looking to the south uh, underneath Talmadge Avenue. Up into Cuyahoga Falls, um, to the right of the uh, picture on the left-hand side, um, you'll see the Route 8 Expressway. And um, Broad Boulevard is, is just, just down that road there on the, on the side, that little service road. Um, you see some sections are overgrown to be nearly impassable by foot on the right-hand side. Then here's the section that overlooks the Cuyahoga River. I, I just think this would just make a beautiful bike trail. If you can imagine riding your bike and, and looking uh, off the side to see the, the river be down below, just an absolute uh, beautiful view. And then on the right-hand side, you'll see another picture. Here's the, the right of way where there's no track whatsoever. It's just, uh, it's a gravel path right now. It'd be really easy to put a bike path on this. We get up into Stowe and you'll see, uh, again, similar situation. Uh, we don't have big trees uh, growing through the tracks here, but uh, a lot of overgrowth, a lot of uh, shrubs and um, weeds growing up through the tracks. This is uh, over in the Seasons Road area. And then uh, there's an industrial park um, on the left-hand side there. And then uh, this is looking north with Macaulay Road behind me uh, on this one picture I took on the right-hand side. And there's a couple of other pictures that I just thought I'd throw in here just to give you an idea. Here's a, when I talk about a big picture growing up through the rail track, uh, this, is, this one on the left is pretty interesting where the, the tree is literally grown right up against the, the, the uh, track bed in Cuyahoga Falls. And again, on the right, um, the, the brush is so thick that you can barely pass through it. And there's some pictures of um, up and as we get into Hudson, uh, the area looking uh, 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 O'Brien Cemetery, uh, there's a private lake there on the, on the, on the left-hand side and a tree farm. And then on the right-hand side picture, um, here's, a, here's the, you can see a little bit of the railroad track there in the lower right-hand corner of the picture. Um, and we are looking at further in the background, there's a bridge going over the right-of-way. That is the existing Summit Metro Park Bike and Hike Trail. And the intent there would be to create an intersection there where someone could go from one trail to the other uh, at that juncture. Another picture up in uh, up near Terex Road, the Terex Road Bridge, and then I threw this picture in over here on the right hand side, the that stone bridge, which is just absolutely gorgeous uh, at the Cuyahoga River over by Front Street. And then the trail ends um, in downtown Hudson 
behind the Acme Plaza near Milford Drive and Veterans Way. This is the, the track coming in. You see the water tower to the right. Um, this is where um, the, the plan would be for this trail to end. And as I said, this little section here to Barlow Road is Norfolk and Southern owned property. Um, so it's always difficult dealing with um, railroads. They don't like to give land away. Uh, in fact, they don't even like to talk to you. And I found that to be the case back in my days as an engineer for Sherwin-Williams. Uh, we had projects sometimes that uh, work, we were trying to work with railroads on uh, uh, doing different projects. And it was always very, very difficult uh, to get them to talk with us. And we're finding that to be the case right now, but uh, we are chipping away at it with the help of um, some local and uh, uh, local politicians and also with the help of Senator Rob Portman's office. So let me give you a little bit of a history on what we've been doing. Um, last year was challenging, obviously, for um, the purposes of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, really got in the way of our, our plans. In 2019, we were going to uh, bicycling and running events, talking with people who would be the primary users of a trail like this and getting our information out there. Well, that pretty much came to a stop last year with, um, with the coronavirus. So we've had to do a lot of things online and attend meetings virtually like, like we're presenting to you today. Um, we, we had hoped we were gonna develop our membership ranks um, much better than we did, but uh, we're happy with the team we have and we're, we're proud to say that we have probably somewhere north of 300 people um, signed up on our website that are like-minded thinkers that uh, are behind the project. But we were still able to collect letters of support from a number of people, uh, Mayor John Probonik from the city of Stowe, uh, Bernie Hovey from uh, the village of Silver Lake, uh, Don Walters, the city of Cuyahoga Falls, wrote a very nice letter. We got uh, five council members from Hudson to back us up. And um, I'm gonna keep clicking these, but you're gonna notice there's nothing from Akron and I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Uh, our state representative, Casey Weinstein, who is a U.S. Air Force veteran, wrote a great letter supporting the project. And our state senator, Christina Rogna, uh, also wrote a great letter. And Christina, when we talked to her, she actually remembered the 2005 study because she was on Hudson City Council at the time. And she remembered that uh, there was talk about building this trail. And we've had, again, support from a lot of individual trail users. So what's the present state of our project? In 2019, the city of Stowe received a $700,000 grant from uh, Akron Metropolitan Area Transportation Study to develop a segment of the trail in Stowe and the city engineering department under Jim McCleary is prepared to do the preliminary engineering work on that segment. Um, but Metro RTA um, is the owner of the property they, they purchased this property with Federal Trans, Transportation Administration funds. And at the time of that um, money transaction, the stated purpose was that it would be used for a commuter rail. And so in order to change it, um, they have to go to FTA and, and ask permission to continue to own the land and make it a rail to trail. It was supposed to happen in the fall of 2020. Um, it's a tedious process and we understand that things kind of go slow. And then uh, we had the election come up. We have a new administration in Washington. So uh, we know that with the transition, um, that's probably gonna delay us even further. Um, so we're, we're slowly patiently waiting. But as we found out, and especially one of our, our great partners and, and allies in this, Mr. Dan Rice at the Ohio and Erie Canalway Coalition told us, all trails start with the ownership of the land. And once the ownership of the land is transferred to the person who is going to build the trail, and which in this case would be Summit Metro Parks, you know, we'll, we'll get going on this, but we just are, we're in a holding pattern right now. So we had some recent events in, in December of 2020, uh, some of you may or may not have read uh, an Akron Beacon Journal article uh, that was a discussion about a proposal to reactivate the rail line, a small private um, 
short line railroad called the Hudson and Southern um, has expressed an interest in reactivating rail service on that right of way. We are in full disagreement with this uh, option and um, we were interviewed and it was covered by the Beacon Journal, uh, the Record Courier and the Hudson Life Magazine um, back in late December that we were um, in opposition to it. And at the time Metro RTA has had come out and stated in those articles that they are seeking the trail option. But um, recently we, we received a letter from their CEO stating that that was not necessarily the case, that they're still weighing all options. Um, but Hudson, Stowe and Tioga Falls have all stated that they want the trail project and they were very surprised to hear that there was a, a plan to reactivate rail on the, on the right of way. Just recently, the city of Stowe, thanks to uh, Councilman in uh, Ward 4, Mario Fioca, introduced a resolution, uh, number 2021-38, um, wanting to put a trail on the right of way. And it was passed unanimously 7-0 and um, is going to be effective um, 418. So here's the big ask. Um, and I, I should add another ask in here. Um, I, I, I should, I'm gonna stop for a second and say, as I mentioned in that slide a, a few previous slides ago, we, we have been talking to or trying to talk to people in the city of Akron. We started with Jeff Fusco because we heard Jeff um, was a cyclist, uh, or at least that's what we were told. Um, and we had um, our founder, Ron Brubaker, talked with a few other council people. Um, this was before everything got shut down with COVID. Um, I think Seamus Malik was one person that he talked to and there was another council person. I don't recall their name. Um, we also talked with uh, two fellows at the city uh, engineering department, Mike Tiadecki and David Clapp. That was where we found out about the Rubber City Heritage Trail. And then we also had a discussion with a gal in uh, the city of Akron. I'm not sure if she's in engineering or not, but uh, uh, Michelle DeFiore is her name. And we made a presentation to her about what we were trying to do. But uh, our big ask, um, and I've been talking to several Rotary clubs in the last uh, month or two, is asking members to write letters of support for us to Metro RTA and asking them to dismiss this rail proposal and embrace a multi-purpose trail. And I obviously, you know, I've stated all the reasons why we think a trail would be, uh, would better serve the, the residents of Summit County versus um, a, a private railroad um, that really, um, we don't, ha we haven't seen their business plan, but we really wonder uh, how successful it might be. Um, we want them to get that application with the FTA put in to permit the right of way to be repurposed as this, as this trail. Uh, again, we, we've talked to a gentleman at Senator Rob Portman's office, and he's offered to facilitate this application process, but so far Metro hasn't, uh, taken us up on that. Um, now, Senator Portman's office cannot intercede with the process of supporting the project because, you know, it, it's not a federal project, it's a local project, but they're willing to help with that FTA application. And once this application gets approved, um, getting signed leases with, you know, Summit Metro Parks and the local communities along that right of way that will allow this trail to be built. Um, and that's what we've been asking people to do is, is letters of support. We're not able to get petitions out there. We, you know, we would love to go door to door. We'd like to meet people face to face, but let's face it in COVID times, nobody really wants to, <laughs> wants you to be in their face. So uh, we're not able to do that. So this is our, our best option at this point in time. So in conclusion, I wanna thank you for this opportunity to present this update. And we certainly welcome your support um, and um, our website, uh, taskforce.org, again, it's T-A-S-C, force.org, not .com. Um, and you can sign up. It doesn't take long. Uh, you put your name in, and uh, there's an area where you can indicate what your interest would be in terms of trail use. Are you a cyclist? Are you a dog walker? Are you a hiker, a jogger? Uh, just getting out in nature, whatever. Um, and when you sign up on our website, you'll get emails from us as we progress on the project. 
that's pretty much our presentation, and I'm certainly uh, happy to take any questions from, uh, from, from the audience. All right, well, thank you very much for that presentation. And as a cyclist and a dog walker, I'll have to get my, I'll have to get my pen ready. Um, David Hall will moderate some of the questions, but while he's warming up, it, you, you said, Bill, that we, you'd like us to request support for Senator Rob Portman's offer be, to be taken up. Who, who, do we, who do we request support from? Um, so, uh, well, the number one thing, again, is, and we have that information on, on our website. Uh, okay. Don Disler is the CEO at uh, Metro RTA. And on our website, when, when, when you go to our website, you'll see a, um, a tab for um, show support. Uh, we've included the information, contact information for both Don Disler, the CEO of Metro RTA, and also to Lisa King, who is the CEO of Summit Metro Parks. Um, now, Lisa has told us that uh, we're impatient. That, that's part of the problem. Ron and I, both having worked in corporate America, uh, we, we come from the mindset of um, when are you going to get that project done? Okay. How quickly can you get this project done? And we've come to the understanding and, and Dan Rice has been a great uh, counselor to us to say, guys, you got to be patient. You can't push these people. Um, they're aware of what you want to do. They know the project is out there. The project's been under study for years. It'll happen. Um, those are the two key people. Um, I do have the information. We don't have it on our website, um, but a young man by the name of Josh Prest, who uh, is um, a, a staffer in Rob Portman's office in downtown Cleveland, is the person we've been talking to about getting this, um, uh, this land, uh, this right-of-way transferred from rail to trail. And again, I, I, that one I'm, I'm, a little bit, I'm a little bit squeamish on because, uh, again, I don't want to... I don't want to tell Metro RTA what they should be doing. They know what the process is. Uh, but we talked about this for two years. I mean, the very first person we met with as a team was uh, uh, the director of planning at Metro RTA. And she was the one that mentioned that they were going to have to talk to, um, you know, the FTA. And that was supposed to happen in the fall of 2019. And it didn't happen. And then we got into the pandemic year. There was supposed to be a big meeting amongst the five communities with Metro and Summit. COVID hit and they canceled the meeting. Uh, Jim McCleary, the city engineer in Stowe, is very anxious to get moving on this. And we thought we were getting to the point in September or October where the, the FTA process was going to get started. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. The election came around and we're still nowhere. Thank, Thank you, Bill. You, yeah, we, we have uh, a couple questions here. Um, uh, to whom would we request support that Rob Portman offers? Would we send that direct to, uh, to Rob's office or? I can, um, you know what I can do? Um, uh, I can, I can um, provide the information, the contact information for uh, the young man that we've been talking with. We haven't spoken to him in quite a while, but uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he'll remember us. Um, it's unfortunate for us, you know, Rob Portman, is, if, if those of you don't know, is a, uh, he's an avid cyclist. We, we found that out from talking with Josh Prest, and uh, he's, he, he would very much support the project. It's just unfortunate that uh, he's chosen not to run for re-election in 2022. Okay. Um, additionally, here we have another question asking, uh, what really makes the trails uh, so expensive to build and in, in, in the time process? Well, again, um, as far as, you know, the cost, uh, and I don't have um, an updated cost for you on, you know, what that trail would cost per mile. Um, we do know that uh, in some areas, um, the trail passes through wetlands up in, up in Hudson, Stowe, that right at that border area, there are some wetlands there, and that always can add additional cost to it and also will slow the project down. Um, why it takes so long, um, again, it, it has to do with um, land acquisition is the number one stumbling block. And then the other thing I think for us is we've met with some of, some of Metro Parks and we know that their, um, 
they have other projects. Uh, they are working right now on, um, if, if you're not familiar with the Freedom Trail, where the Freedom Trail ends right now, you have to literally get off the trail, get on a road, which does have a very nice bike lane to it, but you cycle for about oh, somewhere between a quarter to a half a mile on a road and then connect to the Portage Bike and Hike Trail. It takes you right into downtown Kent. Um, we know that they are working on a connection. They're going to actually put a bridge in over the railroad track and then bring it back directly into that trail. So we know that's a priority for them. We know the high bridge trail is, is a priority project that they're working on. And they're also working on the connection in Akron, downtown Akron. I don't know if you are all familiar with this, but where the Freedom Trail ends right now, if you ever ride that into Akron, you just come to an end and it just, there's a big barrier there and it says end of trail, turn around. And they're working on that connection. And again, the issue there is there's some railroad property that they wanted to use and the railroad said, nope, can't use it. You got to go around it. So I think for Summit Metro Parks, this is not as high of a priority um, as some of their other projects. Very good. Um, another question regarding that grant from Stowe, is, is, is there a time limit on that grant? Well, there is, um, there is a, uh, a time limit, but fortunately for us, that, uh, that money is future money. It's in 2024. So it's not something that we have to, um, you know, do right. You know, it's not like it's, we're in danger of losing it. So hopefully we'll, we'll get this moving because the section that Stowe wants to build will take cyclists off of uh, residential streets in Stowe and make it much safer uh, through, through that neck of the old uh, bike and hike trail. Very good, very good. Well, I don't see any other questions in the chat right now. If anybody else on, on uh, line here has a question for Bill, feel free to unmute and, and ask your question. Well, David, with six minutes left, uh, I'll, I'll intervene. If somebody does have a question, uh, after I ring the bell, um, maybe Bill can hang on for a couple minutes afterwards. Uh, if you've got other things on your schedule, Bill, I respect that, but we really are grateful for your time. Um, despite the fact that it was a last minute invite, I'm really grateful that we got you here because uh, you know, I, I take advantage of that, and now I'm going to go out and try, tell my wife I need a trail bike to complement my my road bike. So, thank you there. A as we wrap up here today, uh, we we will have next week several of our students of the year. Ter Terry Dalton has been so diligent with the scholarship work despite the pandemic, so that we will feature several of our local students in our discussion. And by the way, Terry, uh, I, I don't see your crown this week. And I thought that that was a four four week uh, opportunity for you to be uh, be the <laughs> king. But just saying. Uh, the, happy birthday to Megan Olson on the 15th. Happy birthday to Jeff Kemp on the 19th. And as I already said earlier, this is uh, a happy anniversary of your join date when Phil will. Williams joined us one year ago tomorrow, so it's hard to believe that that's that uh, long ago, Phil. Uh, heads up to our new board of directors members that will be assuming office in July. Uh, Michael Shear, Katerina Pappas, Doug Cole, and Laura Smiley. Uh, stay tuned for a, an email. We're looking for an opportunity to do a physically distanced but socially acceptable um, in-person board orientation out at the Rotary Camp. So we're trying to get some time lined up. You've still got a, several weeks before you have to understand what the board is all about. Uh, but we have, uh, we'll have a cast of characters, including your, your soon to be president, Steve Bowie, Linda Farkas and Tom Knauer will assist me in getting you folks on board and you'll get a great tour of the Rotary Camp. So are there any other uh, questions or comments? I'm gonna forewarn you for next week, our icebreaker is gonna, it's gonna to revert to a standard, but I think you need a, you deserve to have a little opportunity to prep is we're gonna do two truths and a lie. And I think this is a great opportunity for us to meet some of our newer members. So all of you, we've, we've been very lucky and fortunate to have 
new members come on board during the pandemic. And this is a chance for you to uh, tell us a little about something about yourself and show us uh, whether we have to identify what your tell is if you're telling us something that's not quite right. So next week, uh, two truths and a lie. And unless there are other things, David, I can't see my, uh, I can't see the chat right now. No, nothing in the chat. Just some, some compliments again, Bill, fantastic uh, presentation. Excellent, uh, you know, with a short time and everybody was very impressed. So thank you very much for your time. Yes, I was, um, I was just uh, scrolling through some of the chat comments and uh, there weren't so much questions, but uh, I do uh, appreciate um, the, the kind words. Um, yes, uh, the, some of the names that um, several people, especially Susan mentioned, uh, are familiar to me, although I don't know them. Uh, Ron Brubaker probably does from being a good year for 46 years. But um, this, uh, this, this project is very, uh, very uh, near and dear to us. Um, we obviously uh, won't get to use it that much as we're getting up there in years, but uh, I love to see it as a legacy for my kids and my, my grandchildren to use. Excellent. Great. So when they go, when they decide to go forward, they'll get to see all, all the people using your, uh, your trail and uh, your, your descendants. So I'm sure we'll have that biking gene. Yeah, I have a, my, my grandson who just became an Eagle Scout. Uh, he and I did uh, several bike rides together. I guess I, he somehow through osmosis became a, an avid cyclist like me. Well, it doesn't fall far from the tree, and I'm sure you've inspired them to have fitness as incorporated into their uh, everyday life. So that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you again, Bill, for joining us. Thanks to Katie for um, getting us an excellent uh, speaker on short notice and, and to be running our speakers bureau uh, since uh, John Margita got tied up with taxes for a little bit. So thank you, Katie. And Terry, I expect to see your crown next week and two truths and a lie. So get ready, new members. We are adjourned. So, um, are we having questions now? Sure. If Bill, if Bill has a few oh, more minutes Bill, to first stick around. Of all, I want to say thank you so much. I really enjoyed the the presentation because I was unaware that, uh, you know, there was an effort to have a bike trail from Stowe to Akron and we live in Stowe and, um, you know, that's exciting news. So I hope that we can help out. Um, at any rate, um, my husband didn't get to hear your presentation. How is it that I get on uh, the, I know it's been recorded through the club and how can I replay it? Okay, so um, uh, I'm gonna share the, the PowerPoint uh, with Terry Dalton. I'm gonna send it to him via email. Uh, okay. But uh, our website is taskforce.org. I've looked it up already. Not great. Um, and you'll, you know, you'll have access to uh, both myself and Ron's, uh, Ron Brubaker's uh, uh, contact information there. Okay. Uh, if you go to any of the, the bike shops in the area, you'll find our, our we have um, little trifold brochures on display there and um, places like Eddie's and Marty's um, and Century Cycles have all, you know, been displaying our, our, our brochures for a while and more information about the project. Yeah, we, just, we live right between Eddie's and, and, and uh, Marty's bike shop. Susan, I always have a link in the article about the speaker that Terry writes. So there's always a click here to view the presentation link. So you can just click on that to view the presentation when we're when we push out the newsletter. So and Bill, just to give you a little bit of information about us, because we'd like to get to know you. Uh, but uh, we were part of um, the Bike Touring Society in um, Britain and, and France, and we did the French Alps, the thousand miles in the French Alps. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, uh, back in the, that was 1978. Wow. Uh, we've biked on the White Rim Trail in the Canyonlands because we lived in Colorado for 
We did Slip Rock there. Um, we did a portion of the Lewis and Clark Trail from um, St. Charles, Missouri to Bismarck, North Dakota. The wow. rest of our bike club, the Romeos, did the entire thing from Pittsburgh to the West Coast. That was uh, led by Walt Ruthenberg, who was at Goodyear. He's right. passed, but he was, you know, great. Bill Kelleher. And then Bill oh, yeah. Kelleher, too. But um, So we'll have to ask your uh, Ron about if he knew them. But uh, so we're up, we're up in years. We're probably beyond you. That's but, all right, but you're, you're, you're still, you're still well, with us he, and you're, you're still getting out there. Uh, yeah, he's, 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 yeah, he's, somewhat. I've been doing yeah. more walking than, than biking. So, yeah, you should, this is you safe should see you're in a dragon boat. Yeah, I do a dragon boat. We did do the um, um, Danube from Austria to Hungary uh, five years ago. Mm. Yeah, but this is my yeah. husband, Steve. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, it'd be interesting to uh, hear, hear your whole presentation, which I, I unfortunately did not. But uh, just in terms of trail access and uh, uh, bottlenecks, I'm wondering uh, on the trail, you know, say from uh, uh, going up, going up uh, uh, north uh, and in the area parallel to Route 8, you know, with that development, uh, industrial uh, work being done up around Seasons Road. Right. Uh, I haven't seen any plans of whether they're going to do a stoplight or underpass or overpass on that. Is there anything in the middle at all? No, we, there's there's nothing that's been discussed about it. We we had some uh, lighthearted discussions with uh, Jim McCleary, the city engineer at Stowe, about uh, how we overcome some of these obstacles. And uh, I think we, we were bantering about uh, um, a number of you know in terms of what it would take to to you know build a bridge over a busy road or something like that. And Ron and I were kidding each other and we said, well, you know. You, you, you probably have a lot of money saved up from, you, you know, your good year days. And he'd say, yeah, Bill, you, you probably have a lot of, you know, Sherwin Williams stock that's doing really well. You, you could probably pay for that bridge. And I'm like, sure. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that, that, that will be a problem as, as the development, uh, you know, comes along in that area there. Well, you know, and, and I'm surprised nobody asked me this question because it has been asked before, but I'll, I'll throw it out there. Uh, where's the money going to come from for this? And Dan Rice told us one time, he said, the money will come. Mm -hmm. he said, there, there are places, there are places where, you know, there, you know, um, oh, there, there are grants, there are, there are foundations and, and organizations in the state of Ohio that you can apply for grants. Um, some at Metro Parks will be creative and, and, and where to, to get money from. It could come from some private donors, some generous donors might, uh, uh, you know, bequeath some money uh, for the project. But he said the money will come. He said the biggest obstacle, again, is acquiring the land. Mm -hmm. Start with that. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bill, is, is, the, uh, is the bridge uh, over the Cargo, Cargo River still uh, uh, operational for your, your, your trail there? Well, we, we think for the trail, it certainly would be, but we, we do have some concerns. And we actually, Ron actually talked to a couple of companies that do um, um, rehabilitation of bridges. And uh, we didn't want to, again, step on Metro RTA's toes on this one, but we want to at least, you know, say, hey, let's get ahead of this thing. And, you know, let, let's think about things like, you know, is this bridge, um, you know, usable? Is it workable? And if not, what do we need to do to rehabilitate it? So, we're, we're looking at it, but again, we don't want to step on toes. Was that the, the picture of the bridge uh, that you showed in the, the presentation, the yeah. stone bridge? Yep. You know, if, if any, anybody's familiar with it, right there at Front Street, there's a memorial to the um, doodlebug accident. That's what I was going to ask if that was the doodlebug bridge. The doodlebug, okay. a little parking lot right there. Yes, sir. Okay. That would be a great place for jumping onto the trail, too, with that parking yes. lot. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well. We'll definitely get in touch with Rob Portman. I call him probably at least two times a week. So 
be a problem. What what does the name TASC stand for? Trail Advocates of Summit County. Trail Advocates of, of Summit, Summit County. County. Okay. Yep. I was director of Metro Parks when we opened our first bike and hike trail on the railroad right away many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, I'll tell you what, I can't say enough good things about um, uh, Summit Metro Parks. And I've said this to Lisa King before. Um, I really thank them for their, um, my wife and I used to like to do the hiking spree, but unfortunately she had a stroke several years back and um, she can't walk the way she used to be. And uh, in the spring, we love the, the spree for all where I can uh, take her transport chair and get her out for it. And uh, this would be another great trail for us to, uh, to, to, to go down. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Hello? Thank you so much. Hello. John, can you mute John, Cheryl? Thank you. I, I don't know what his call is, but we don't need to know what his call is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much, Bill. I'm going to need to step off and actually earn my keep here at the hospital. So uh, thanks very much. And I look forward to uh, seeing you on the trails.